There is only being, simply being, timeless being. And in that timeless being also arises the idea of you being a person, of you being an individual. That's the dream. What arises is the dreamer, the dreamer of being an individual that is separate to everything. And that's the game that one plays. It's oneness playing the game of pretending it is a separate individual. There's nothing right or wrong about it. It is just what's happening. It's aliveness happening. Radical aliveness arises as a separate individual. And from the moment that that separation arises, the clock starts ticking and seeking happens. The dream seeker (coughs) arises and seeks being, seeks timelessness, and grows up as a child and is taught this and that, as a, t- as a student at school is taught what to do and how to, how to organise its life, how to make its life work. When it gets a job, it, it's taught how to do work and make that work, make that successful. If, it, if it's interested in religion, this dream seeker <coughs> will go and meet a priest and the priest will tell it how to become a, a true Christian or a true Buddhist. And all the time, this dream seeker knows that there's something missing, knows that there's a secret it can't get at. There's a sense of loss. From the moment of separation, there's a sense of loss. It feels as though uh, paradise has been lost. Something has been lost. Something is missing. And it doesn't matter where that dream seeker goes, that dream seeker, that function of that dream seeker is to seek. It's constant seeking for oneness and everybody that you see in the world trying to be successful in in any way is actually really in the end seeking oneness all desire is the longing to come home but the dream seeker will always be attracted to dream teachers because that's the function of oneness oneness loves being fascinated by not finding itself and is fascinated by the search. And so oneness arises as dream teachers, dream priests, dream therapists, dream teachers, dream enlightened masters. And the whole idea of that is to maintain the search, the fun of the search. And so the dream seeker will go to a dream teacher and the dream teacher will say to the dream seeker, yes you are a separate individual and yes there is something called enlightenment and you can find it by meditating or whatever and in some way or other that function of teaching the individual to go on seeking reinforces and maintains the search and maintains the sense of separation but it's possible it's possible when there is a readiness not when the person is ready, but when there is a readiness, it's possible that that dream seeker will go and hear a rare and radical message. This is a rare and radical message. If you really hear, if what's being said is really heard, not you hearing it, but if it's really heard, it will be seen that this points to one thing only. It points to the realisation that arises in liberation that there is no one and nothing to be liberated. It points at, is a pointing to the realisation, the understanding, the understanding only, that there is no one, there is no one sitting in this room. There is no such thing as a a dream seeker. There is no such thing as an individual who is separate. It's simply a dream. The whole idea of separation is a dream. So that could be understood. It's possible that, I mean, there are people in this room that can absolutely understand that there is only oneness, that there is only consciousness, that there is only aliveness. But understanding is also not it. Clarity is not awakening. Knowing that there is only consciousness 
is not being consciousness. Still you have an individual who knows that there is only this, there is only consciousness. But you still have a separate individual who knows something. That's why this message is so rare and radical. Because what happens here and elsewhere, not many places but it does, is that in some way or other, the sharing together of this communication, and it's not somebody teaching anybody else, it's a share, we are sitting here sharing together this communication. In that sharing, in that coming together and sharing, something energetic happens. And it's the energetic shift that is the awakening and the liberation. It's not the understanding. In some way or other, when separation happens, energetically there's a contraction into this, me, I am the centre of the world. This, everything is drawn into this apparent person, this dream seeker. So people who come here often come in that contracted state of individuality. And what can happen is that that contracted state of individuality bursts out into everything, just goes back into everything. And there's no longer a me sitting in a contracted state. There is simply boundlessness. This is, what you're meeting here is boundlessness. What you're sitting in is boundlessness. It's nobody's boundlessness. It's not Tony Parsons. Tony Parsons is nothing. Just another body-mind thing doing this. But that boundlessness is not owned by anyone. It simply is aliveness. It simply is being. And what the seeker comes to expand into is that boundlessness. But the seeker can't make that happen, it just happens. So sitting here and talking together and answering questions is just an excuse for something else to happen, which is far beyond understanding. This is not about understanding. What we're here talking about isn't anything to do with understanding, detachment, knowing, the great knowing. It is about falling in love with this. So clarity is an important part of this. Clarity and confusion. We come possibly with some confusion and we will meet clarity. It's not my clarity, it's nobody's. It's clarity out of nothing. That clarity can clear away the confused idea that there's something that you have to become. Awakening, liberation has absolutely nothing to do with anyone in this room. Absolutely nothing. It doesn't matter how you think you are, how neurotic you think you are, how unstill you think you are, how wonderfully meditative you think you are. It doesn't matter what you think of you, awakening has nothing to do with you. When there is no you, then that which always is becomes apparent. So you haven't come here to gain, nobody comes here to gain anything. People come here to lose something. I don't have anything more than you have. In fact, I've lost something. Me. <laughs> and you only imagine there's a me. There is no me. All there is is aliveness. All that's sitting here is aliveness. If you go in there and look for me, you'll never find it. But if there's simply an opening to this, it will be suddenly realised that what's sitting there is a set of experiences. There's noise, cars, me waving my arms around, sitting on a chair, feelings in the body, the mind thinking. There's nothing wrong with the mind thinking. The mind thinking is simply aliveness happening. It's oneness thinking. So thinking's going on. All those things are going on for no one. There's no one there. Everything that arises is simply being. All there is is beingness. All you are is beingness. So already you have there everything you long for. Already the thing you seek is sitting there right now. Being. This can't be escaped from because it is all there is. This can't be attained because it is all there is. 
This can't be lost because it is everywhere. All that can be lost is the idea that it isn't. <laughs> so if you want to talk, let's talk. 